All right, everybody. Uh, we are going to kick off the next presentation. It's, uh, I'm going to let you say your last name. Um, I always mess it up. So the next presentation is about sort of what we have going on two doors down, which is a hacker space um, or maker space. Uh, they are somewhat used interchangeably. I think um, so. Yeah. And so the one next door is what we lovingly call a pop-up maker space because it has no permanence. It doesn't actually sit there all year round. But there are places near where you live, most likely, that are there 24-7 uh, all year around. So that's a pretty cool thing. And Pavel is here to tell you about that. And so Pavel, cool. take it away. Thank you. Let me hit start on my thing. First of all, is anybody here familiar with Hackerspaces or is a Hackerspace member? No, cool, okay, a couple, yeah, couple people. That's cool, so I'm gonna tell you about uh, Hackerspaces. Um, so Hackerspace, uh, first off, is made up of tools and junk. So there's a variety of uh, different equipment. Um, it's, it's a physical space. Um, there's a lot of equipment, there's a lot of tooling, there's uh, soldering, there's leftover junk that, that, that people have left for, for people to hack on and, and improve and make new devices out of. Um, and secondarily, there are people, uh, because it's a community. It's kind of a community garage um, where people gather together to innovate and, and create things and, uh, and just, yeah, basically create. Um, so, so you can make things. There are... Um, Again, different types of tools. They're soldering and, and uh, 3D printers, CNCs. Um, people go there. I guess I kind of covered that. People go to there, collaborate, or to uh, sort of pose awkwardly and pretend to collaborate while they caliper a NEMA stepper motor. Um, and uh, many hacker spaces offer classes. Um, so you can kind of go there being green um, and, and not knowing a lot, and they offer classes to teach you how to do various things. Um, from electronic, well, I'll cover the, what the classes are exactly in a little bit. Um, it's the home to many, uh, many Kickstarter projects are born in hackerspaces because it is a creative and collaborative space. Um, people get together, dream up ideas, and think to themselves, like, this could be an actual viable product. This could be something really cool. Um, and crowdfunding has really enabled them to take those things out of the hackerspace and productize it and get funding. Um, so this one is the, uh, the, I'm not sure how to pronounce actually, the LifeX or the LifeX bulb. Um, it's something out of Melbourne Hackerspace. So if you see uh, Andy around, um, he's brought a few, you can play with them. Um, it's actually a pretty successful Kickstarter that, that uh, came out of Hackerspace. Um, a lot of people are kind of afraid or wary of the word hack. Um, often it's associated with uh, computer crime and things like that in the news and the media. Um, but the hacker space, the, the hack in hacker space actually comes from an older usage of the word that was coined uh, in the 1960s at MIT um, and actually at a, a, the Tech Model Rail, Rail, Railroad Club. Um, so basically a bunch, of, uh, a bunch of people getting together passionate about trains and train sets and models. Um, and as you can imagine, they had to find out, uh, find creative ways of hooking things up and doing interchanges and switches. So they coined the term hack back in 1960, way before it was uh, associated with any sort of, um, you know, malevolent deed, any kind of computer crime or anything. Um, so it's just a clever workaround or a solution to a problem that's not standard. Um, but I don't really care what you call them. Um, so I'm going to talk about the difference uh, of some of the, the different terms you may hear. Um, so hacker spaces and maker spaces, they're pretty interchangeable. Um, but there are like a few small differences kind of in, in mindset and perception. Um, in Las Vegas, I'm uh, a board member of SinShop, and we are either a hackerspace or a makerspace, depending on who we're talking to and how we want to present things. Um, often, people will just avoid the, the word hackerspace because, you know, because it gives people the wrong type of image. Uh, but generally, hackerspaces are member-run, nonprofit organizations. Um, you usually pay a monthly fee. Um, SinShop is about $40 a month. Um, different hackerspaces charge different fees depending on, well, their rent um, and the type of equipment they have and their membership size. Um, they're often not self-sufficient. Um, uh, sometimes they, they run on grants. Sometimes they run on like the generous donations of, of prominent members that just want to keep the place running because it's their passion project. Um, they're a little bit chaotic at times. Um, 
they're kind of, uh, they can be a little bit messy, kind of grungy, but, uh, but they're cool creative spaces. Um, places that tend to identify themselves as a makerspace are kind of more of a, a clean cut version of a hackerspace. They take more of the um, kind of like make magazine view of things. Um, they're usually a lot more family friendly, a um, little, little bit better upkeep. It's really just a, a terminology change. No guarantee what you're going to find, um, but it is a perception thing. You might also hear of a tech shop. Um, tech shop is actually a, a copyrighted uh, a trademark term, um, and it's, it's a franchise. Um, it's, um, it's a lot like a hackerspace, um, but, but it's, again, for profit. It's not a nonprofit. Um, membership dues are significantly higher, about, um, I don't know, maybe $250 a month. Uh, but they have a very nice uh, facility, very clean. Um, some of the community aspects often aren't as strong because people are just kind of going there for uh, you know to do what they want to do. It's kind of like a like a gym membership. You don't often like you know interact with people. You kind of like I want to go there to use the laser cutter. I want to go there to use the uh, the table saw or whatever, do their thing, and they go home. They're usually open 24/7, um, and yeah, they have employees to to help you do things and help you guide through. They often um, charge money for, uh, for classes as a requirement to use certain equipment. Um, so that's how they operate. Um, and then the other one you might hear is a fab lab. Um, fab labs are basically makerspaces and hackerspaces as well, but they come from academia. Uh, so this came out of MIT. Um, it is, again, kind of a, a trademark term, um, they, but it's well known. It has um, sponsorship deals and uh, certain rules and regulations that, uh, that they have to operate by, like they have to have affordable membership and it's basically just a uh, space that has tools to, to build everything you might uh, want to do. Want to do. Um, so what kind of things can you do there? Um, so as I mentioned, electronics, often um, you know, they'll have soldering stations, uh, reflow uh, stations, um, equipment for kind of etching or milling your own PCBs, um, that level of thing. Um, often they'll have uh, sewing or soft circuit areas where you can, uh, like sewing machines, industrial sewing machines, um, vinyl cutters and things like that as well. Um, woodworking, so that includes um, both things like traditional table saws and band saws, as well as uh, more modern woodworking equipment um, like CNC's or, or like large shop bots, which are computer controlled um, like routing machines where basically you, um, you put in a plan and out pops like Ikea furniture. Um, so this, this wood that you see here is, is cut out on a CNC and it's just meant to pop out um, and, uh, and slot together. Um, 3D printing, of course, just like we have uh, back there. Yay, 3D printing. Um, Laser cutters, uh, our, our shop has a, has a nice, um, I think, 23 by 30 inch bed laser cutter that you can uh, make all sorts of things with, cut through cardboard, um, wood very nicely, felt, um, acrylics, uh, and it's a very useful tool. There are certain things you can't cut on them. Um, we don't have laser cutters this year um, at RobotsConf, um, but you can look one up at your local hackerspace for sure if you're into that. Um, welding, again, depending on the hackerspace, um, it'll have different capabilities and um, often they don't have the right zoning for, for welding. Ours, for example, doesn't. It's in a residential area, so you can't really weld there, but we do have off-site welding courses and if that's something you'd like to learn, uh, you might look into your local hackerspace. Um, really all sorts of things, um, pretty much anything that involves making DIY, doing things from scratch. There are probably hackerspaces that offer classes in it from ham radio to chocolate making to m casting uh, metallurgy, making like swords and knives. There's a great place in uh, San Francisco, I think it's actually, actually in Oakland, called, um, not Artisan's Asylum, I can't think of it. Um, starts with a C. Um, anyway, they offer like glass blowing and, uh, and metallurgy classes. They always show up at Maker Faire and have these really excellent kind of like wrought iron um, like butter knife sets and, and all kinds of equipment. Um, if you're interested in that, uh, find me afterwards and I'll, I'll tell you what the name is because it just is not coming to me today. Sorry? It's, it might be, I don't know if it's the Forge actually. 
It could be. It's something very similar to that. Um, and so if you haven't been to a hackerspace uh, before, you might not know what to expect, so I kind of just wanted to go over what you might expect and, and how you can get through your, your first hackerspace visit, um, you know, happily. <laughs> Um, so first of all, uh, depending on your city, um, there probably is a hackerspace or something similar near you. Um, you should go find your local one. Uh, if you go to hackerspaces.org, it's kind of the, the unofficial, official um, wiki for, for hackerspaces to register themselves so they're known. Um, they have a nice map and uh, you can search by your zip code and find out whatever's near. They list hackerspaces, uh, fab labs, um, anything that's similar. Um, so you should be able to find something um, near your vicinity, hopefully. Um, and then just set your expectations. Um, because hackerspaces, um, and because they are member-run, they're often different qualities all over the place. They could be at somebody's house. Um, it could be a creepy house like this, hopefully not this creepy. Um, and even when they're not, even when they have a physical location, um, they're usually in kind of lower rent industrial areas um, because they, they're low rent, first of all, because it's a nonprofit, and um, they have more lax zoning laws, like in, a, in the downtown or like um, the uh, Noise Bridge, San Francisco Hackerspace is located in the Tenderloin in this kind of um, like a little bit rundown building. Um, so just set your expectations, um, you know, look up where it is. Um, it's okay to bring a friend. In fact, it's probably better to bring a friend because they might get into uh, you know, the hackerspace ideal as well, and, uh, and they're always happy to see more members at those places. Um, be prepared to be ignored. Um, it can happen. I mean, people are there for their own things. Um, they might be wrapped up in what they're doing. If you walk in and nobody says hi to you, um, maybe your first time or whatever, like, I mean, that's okay. Just kind of Look around, get familiar. It's, it's, it's okay to, to you know, ask somebody a question, but if they look busy, you know, maybe just ask if there's like an open day. In fact, you should probably um, look up the, uh, the, the Hackerspaces wiki and see when their open days are. That's when they're kind of prepared to, to greet you and, to, and we'll have like representatives there to actually give tours of the space. Um, that's probably a much better way of, of uh, taking a look. You can always drop by uh, during open shop hours. They usually have hours on the website, but just, just know that people there um, they aren't employees, they're members, and they're kind of doing their own thing. Um, be prepared to get too much attention. That could happen as well. Maybe you'll, uh, you'll show up and you'll want to work on something, and there'll be somebody who's just like, really interested in, in what you're doing, and will just be asking questions and making suggestions. You're like, and like oh, well, I mean, yeah, let me... It, it's okay to kind of tell them, like, hey, uh, you know, I'm really busy. I'm trying to, 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 to do something here. I'm trying to concentrate, whatever. We actually have do not disturb signs at our hackerspace, because there's sometimes a problem. People get excited about making things. They, they want to help out. Um, so that could happen, like totally the polar opposite of not getting enough attention. Um, as you're going through a hackerspace, remember there's nobody obliged to help you. Um, I mean, they are, they are there for their own projects. You, you might be expected to walk in, and it's kind of like a business, but it's, it's really a community, community place and community-owned, community-operated. Um, so just, you know, we have a lot of people um, who kind of like roll through Sin Shop and, and show up and say like, hey, I want to laser cut um, 300 signs. And they kind of expect us to be like, okay, no, like everybody's doing their own thing. Um, but if you go up and, and, uh, and say like, I want to learn how the laser cutter works so I can learn how to laser cut signs or something, people would be a lot more receptive. Um, so even though nobody's obligated to help you, don't worry. Like people, if, if people there see that... that um, that you're eager to learn, that, that you're willing to do things for yourself, um, that, that you're going about it the right way, they'll, they're passionate about the same stuff you are, they'll, they'll be happy to help you. They just, you just have to pick up on the right vibe. They're good people, you know. Um, they're creative people. Um, familiarize yourself with the rules. Uh, there will usually be you know, a page that says, um, these are the rules of the shop. Um, you should know that you, you can't just roll in and use the laser cutter on your first day or, or like a dangerous equipment. Um, often places will have some sort of a certification requirement or somebody to kind of run you through the safety um, on a machine before you, you know, pick it up. And it's just common sense. And different shops have different rules. Um, for example, Noisebridge, I think they only have one rule, which is be excellent to each other. And it's a very kind of chaotic shop. Lots of places a little bit more um, like stringent on, on the requirements and things. Um, 
but uh, yeah, noise bridge is a little bit chaotic. Um, and that's why follow the rules, but also use common sense. Um, so I mean, make sure you know how to use equipment before you, uh, before you pick it up. Um, if you're not sure, ask somebody. Um, again, tech shop, they, they will require you to be certified on, on some of the more dangerous equipment, so it takes like a $50 class, but most hacker spaces, you just really need, um, you need somebody to kind of intro you to the machine, show you the basics, tell you what not to do, don't put vinyl in laser cutter, don't saw off your thumb on the chop saw, things like that. Um, so just use common sense, always respect the machine, use the safety equipment, um, it'll be okay. Um, and then get involved. So uh, again, Hackerspace is a community. It's not, just, it's not just a place, it's not just hardware. There are people there, and there are lots of ways you can show up and integrate yourself into the community um, and sort of become um, a regular and, and, and kind of get you know, the collaboration you want and, and, and get ideas. Um, so a lot of hackerspaces, um, again, because they are nonprofits and they, they, they usually have board meetings, and they're usually open to the public, so you can show up on a board meeting day and, uh, and help give some you know, feedback and shape the policies of the shop and make it a better place. Um, often you can vote in members. If you, if, you know, if, you, if you stick around and you like the place, you can join the board and, and help make you know, the policy. There are events like Hack Your Hackerspace Days, um, where you'll roll up and just kind of clean the space and do things that need to be done around the shop. Um, that's, that's a great way to kind of integrate yourself into that community. Um, and you'll be fine. I mean, hackerspaces aren't that scary. It's just a matter of going about it the right, with the right attitude. Um, and yeah, they're awesome. Um, so like, as many of you, um, you know, as we have the hackerspace, uh, the pop-up hackerspace here, uh, maybe you'll want to continue kind of your, your making and, 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 uh, and things as you go home. So I hope you look up your local hackerspace um, and give it a try because it'll have a lot of tools and resources for you to, uh, to continue your, your making after this event. At least as far as hackerspaces go, um, like they all set their prices differently. Um, but in the case of Sin Shop, um, we have a monthly fee and a discount if you pay annually. Um, so ours is like $40 monthly. Even Tech Shop, I think if you buy up like a larger block or go through a, through a corporate discount, there, there's ways of getting it cheaper. Um, and some places have no dues, like, like Noisebridge. You just show up um, and it's kind of like completely voluntary, donation-based. So it really depends on the space. Uh, there's not a location where I am. Mm -hmm. It's like a top 50 town in the country. Is there any kind of a virtual meetup or anything like that for other areas or for other people to get more information? Sure. Or is that anything in the works or thoughts, comments? Thank you. Well, for virtual stuff, um, there is hackerspaces.org has a monthly call-in. Um, so different hackerspaces and different people who are into making will kind of just like call in old telephone style conference um, and, and just discuss sort of like issues and ways of running hackerspaces and kind of events coming up. Um, other ways, uh, maybe you can visit the, uh, the Make uh, Google group where they have kind of activities and things like that, um, techniques. There's a lot of excellent resources. Cool. Well, thanks, everyone. Thank you very much, Pavel.